welcome to the first of four sessions in the 2022 Substrong Win the Battle of Consistency, Unleash, Unleash the Guide to the Full Potential Track. Colorado Cleanup are, is sponsoring the four session track. Colorado Cleanup specializes in heavy industrial, commercial, and high rise demolition. They are based in Inglewood, Colorado, and have built a reputation for aggressively taking on some of the most challenging demo earthwork and environmental projects in the Front Range. This sub-track, this substrong track offers attendees information and tools to expand their initial business plans into customized capacity building guides. The four-part series, Win the Battle of Consistency, will unleash your full business potential. The takeaway, providing no-nonsense functional practices that will help you develop your path to reach your full full business potential. Session one is all about the battle strategies. This The series is presented by Grant, the owner of Resource Gravity LLC, a professional business strategy and tactical implementation firm that assists construction companies in customizing their internal company resources and building operational consistency. Grant founded Resource Gravity in 2018, following a 22-year career at Hensel Phelps Construction. The second session today at 1 p.m. is Realized Strategy, and Grant will be talking about commitment and simple approach to strategy. Grant, there's a lot to cover in these four sessions. Let's get started. Awesome, thank you very much. Well, good morning. Um, looks like we have, uh, I've got the people polls on here, so I, people chat poll side. So, so if you got a little bit of a small group here, but that's fine. Um, so I've got some slides that I put together um, for <clears throat> for each of these tracks and just thoughts on different things. And, and what I wanna say before I start sharing slides and everything is just thank you to the um, ASA Colorado for having me. I, I appreciate it. It's the first time I've done this <clears throat> here at this with this group. So I'm kind of excited to just kind of share some things that I've seen here over the last few years since I left, left Hansel Phelps and help people do um, and try to get ourselves better at what we do. So um, I've tried to simplify things into a pretty common sense approach. I'm not going to do a lot of uh, a lot of hardcore lecture training stuff. This is more kind of on the on the more higher level thought process um, concept space. So with this group, feel free to jump in and interrupt me at any time um, with anything that we're talking about or I'm talking about. And um, and please just, just speak up and we can have a conversation rather than me just talking for an hour um, about anything that comes up. And so um, with that, I'm gonna share my screen here and get my slides going. And so, just gonna do this, share my screen. And so hopefully everybody can still, unfortunately I'm, I'm in a remote location here so I can't see, <laughs> can't see the side. So I'm just looking at slides. So if please interrupt me um, as we go through this and I hope that everybody can <clears throat> see my screen now. Um, and so, yeah, so here we go. So analyzing business life cycle curve. Um, and so as I was putting this slide together, here's just a quick slide here about kind of who I am and what I do. So like I said, like the intro said, I worked for Ansel Phelps for 21 years in 2018. I said I needed to do a little bit something different, felt like I needed to go out and help. I worked a lot on most of my career, most of my projects that I worked with Hensel Phelps. I worked in a lot of Denver jobs, downtown Denver, and worked with a lot of small businesses and um and different people and i saw the need all the time for consistency and training and i'm a big training um, person and feel like um, my values at the at below there when it comes to training the why and structured adaptability um one of the things that i really believe in is this how to be adaptable and what being adaptable being smart adaptable and structured adaptability means and we'll talk about that in session four actually um or i will talk about that in section four when we look at um um, consistency. Um, so, so what I've put together here is a guide and a graphic here that shows these four concepts that I'm going to walk through and to try to, to try to get some, uh, awareness of these four different areas of, 
of what it takes. I believe it takes what I've seen that it takes in order to, to kind of get yourself and, and your team aligned. Um, and, and I mean that when I say yourself too, get yourself and your team aligned around, around what today's workspace looks like. Um, you know, I sat in and listened to a little bit of the, the, the session, um, before in the stage and, you know, a couple things that were said there, obviously the space we're in is changing the hiring, um, the hiring and, um, people battle that we're in right now to find good people and train them is changing. Um, you know, the, the space of data management and, um, an awareness of how to manage what you do is changing. There's, there's technology spaces that I see that are useful and some that are completely unuseful and how do you handle technology in this space is, is still maneuvering. And, and as, you know, as this group knows, um, there are people and businesses out there, con contractors out there that try to leverage technology, but really it just makes things harder. So how does that all apply to what we do? And, um, and so with that, these four areas, concept number one, um, this analyzing the life cycle of where you believe you are in your, in your space and validating your current space, um, looking back to look forward is another way to think of space one. Concept two is to really realize what strategy you need. And, and we'll talk about that this afternoon, but defining what level you're in and where you're at or what you have or what you don't have or what you believe you need is step two. Concept two, step three is then once you have the strategy, how do you apply it? What do you do? And I think that there's a big gap right here in the industry right now um, because there's a lot of people doing strategy, but um, once you come up with the strategy as a, as a business, um, you have a hard time finding time to work in the business and work on the business at the same time. So enabling proper tactics is important um, to support the strategy and work on things that are important and not work on things that maybe are not important. So that's number three. And then last but not least is consistency. And how do you align this so you can actually keep your teams consistent? So that's step four. And the, the arrow across the bottom, which I don't see if you see if you know, it's all about clarity and where I'm going to weave clarity into some of this stuff too, because honestly, everything today's space, especially with where we're at right now, it's got to be all about clarity. And so <clears throat> analyzing and, and finding clarity um, and this adaptability concept or this structured adaptability content, con, um, concept is, is, is as well too. So these are our four steps. I'm going to go back to this slide every single time um, just to kind of re recap where we've been and where we're going. Um, and so this slide is essentially our our kind of launch point for for the for the guide. So, um, and and just another quick point here. I I believe that you know some of these concepts are obviously been around and and have been and is not new information. Um, however, I feel like what the arrangement here, what I'm trying to represent with this arrangement, is a way to think differently and move into this next space um, with less time in our hands and and a busier world that we're all in today too. So hopefully. There's some there's some topics here, some thoughts there, here along the way that can that, that can launch everyone out into that space. Once again, both for themselves and for the space we're in with our business. So, anyway, um, with that, I'm just going to launch right in here. So, um, so this is now specifically to analyzing life cycle. So, what is a business life cycle? And the what I want to talk about really quick is, you know, um, there's a lot of data out there and a lot of different ways to go analyze and a lot of different spaces and a lot of things that have happened. And, and the Internet is a huge tool. And so I just threw up a couple of ideas here that um, that are out there about where where we're at with a business or, or quite honestly for for where people are at today in today's space. And these three different graphics here show a couple of different ideas about what, um, what this life cycle looks like. And so the, the thought here is, and the concept here to start with is, is what, what type of business life cycle do we feel like we're on? What is gonna work for the company that you're in? And how do you go and find or look into what has happened or where you're at in order to, to, to start a strategy component? And so, just a couple of things here. Notice on, on each of these, um, each of them are, are representing a couple of different stages. The first stage is this, 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 this active line going up, a hump at the top, a potential down. And then in the first graph on the left, a reinvent is the, is the, is the next stage on the way up, either exit or decline. And there are <laughs> definitely reasons why an exit and decline, um, some people are, are there on those spaces too. On the one on the upper right, 
same thing. It's uh, sales and time. Time, you know, time is always at the bottom. Um, Hey, Grant, can you hear us? Oh, we did lose them. Geez, I don't know what happened there. I just all of a sudden got booted off. And oh, welcome back. Huh? Welcome back. Well, I'm sorry about that. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I like completely I noticed my sleeve screen went boom, and then it was like all of a sudden gone. So my oh. apologies on my apologies on that. I'm glad I caught it quick. So so back to my little my little uh, thoughts here. So I'm gonna share again. Sorry about that, everyone. No problem. Uh, <laughs> I still hate tech too, Scott. I am a little. <laughs> uh, here, yeah. Okay, so here we go. Uh... Okay, so um, back to sharing here. So where was I? Back to the screen. And so I was. What I was talking about was finding a finding a business life cycle and understanding where you're at here and how you look at it. And what I was saying was, was the, was the, was the, um, you know, that the graph that I always get a chuckle on is like, we always look backwards to see where we're going and, and knowing what the trough and the downturn and what markets we're jumping into and all those different things. You know, what I'm going to talk about in, when you're talking some of these strategy ideas or tactics for sure, you know, you need to look backwards. And so this concept of business life cycle is real important and I'm not going to probably spend any more time dwelling on this. I'm going to move on. And with our technology issues, I'm just going to keep going here. So, um, what this, what this comes into is a, a, a process or a thought process of what I coin is an awareness and, and a way to look at this is I just, I just say, I, I simplify this into, um, developing a customized approach of uh, looking at a startup or an on enterprise development, which means I'm new, I'm a new enterprise and what am I, what do I want to do? Or I'm adjusting like down at the bottom and reinventing startup and reinventing, I think can sometimes be a little bit related together. A growth 
stage, which is I need to document systems because I'm growing and I have new people coming into my company and I'm in a growth stage and I need to document my systems. I'm in a mature stage and how do I take my process and, and make leadership happen and be adapt, be smart, adaptable, make smart adaptability happen into this next market? Um, I could be in a decline. I could have some mission drift. I mission drift. I might have some people leaving my company. I might be not aware, you know, like need a, need a little bit of an adjustment. And that turns into a reinvent, which I like, which is a good way to think about this decline or these different areas. We're declining in a market and we're moving into a separate area. We need to reinvent ourselves into that. And that usually takes this clarity of passion, niche, vision, and mission, um, which is sets up this idea of launching into the next stages of strategy. So so this, these five different areas are all consistent across many different life cycles. And to put yourself in an awareness of where we're at, I believe is real important to set the stage for how to kind of step into this next stage. Otherwise, we waste a bunch of time down the road. Like it's gonna, it will, it will be things really confusing if we don't align ourselves with what is actually where we're at and where, we're, where we've been in order to really get ourselves started. So, so with that, I'm just gonna quickly walk through some of the characteristics in these areas, just to kind of give again, some ideas and ideation about each of these spaces, just to get some thought process on, on where things are at. So what I've seen, and I'm gonna choose, I've chosen for, for, my, for my, my talks here is to focus on using this, that upper left-hand upper left hand graphic. And the reason I did that is because I believe that there's a large component to what we do in our marketplace with revenue and time. And, and that really drives our sales because sales are so important. If you take good work and find good work and you plan and turn over good work to your team and your operations team, and then you, you consistently build good work in, in, and I call it a three win scenario. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that in the future here. You know, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to make, not only have employees that are happy, you're going to be the best business you can be. And you can be a leader with what, you, with what you're doing and make money and, and build good buildings for people and continue to grow your company. And so, and, and this is the guide. And so, and so these the startup thought, I chose this graph in, in revenue and time because revenue is the key, I believe a very key component and time is always, you know, something that is never changes and, and it's always about time and, and you can never get more time. So in the startup phase, some of the ideas here that that I've seen are procurement is chase and say yes to everything, which means we're just we're just trying to find work and we will say yes to anything and everything we have because we're looking for things that are out there. Um, there's a hire for job mentality, which means I need a job and then I got to go find somebody to hire. And so it's like I'm doing that. Systems are underdeveloped in startups. And it's like whenever you're in this reinventor, sometimes you have to create new systems and they're underdeveloped and we're, we're going for it and we're just making a go of it right now as we go. There's, there's sometimes lack of products that add value for customers. So once again, we're a low cost, low cost, um, low cost component and we win work because of low cost. We're not necessarily bringing value which is the more when you're growing and, and maturity, you're finding your value and you're understanding what your value are. So your so your your cost, your 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 pricing can change. And last but not least, you're usually making large capital investments with technology, equipment, and fixed costs, which means I'm trying to get myself aligned so I can be better when I'm in my growth stage as I'm going along. And so those are some characteristics of startup startup areas. Growth areas now. Here's where um, where a lot of people, I believe, find themselves in um, after the reinvent. You know, you kind of that's why that green area is, or sorry, the blue area on the left there is looking at the green at the time. Um, the startup area there on the left is established businesses are really going from reinvent into growth. And so, and so, if you're in this space, um, you know, a lot of people are right now. And so, procurement has achieved market visibility. So now there's almost too much work to find, too much work to look at sometimes. Um, and so you have market visibility and what's next? What do we do with this market visibility? We're growing. How do I do that? Hiring is difficult. Employee training is demanded. If you don't train, you find yourself in a space where you may lose people because they don't know what they want. A new opportunity comes up. They get wooed away by other more exciting information or more exciting things that are out there. Um, documented systems and technology are critical for clarity and growth stage. If we reinvent the wheel and every job is a, in the growth stage, it creates chaos. And that's a huge component of um, lack of clarity. 
Um, obviously, revenues are rising and companies generating positive cash flow in growth mode usually because you can hide things that are, you know, maybe some challenges along the way. You have enough revenues to hide or, or, or at least maneuver through um, maybe some issues that you have. Um, investment in the company accelerates growth. So any investments you're making in the growth stage usually will accelerate the growth and you'll grow faster. Um, and that's good or it can be it can also provide other challenges. And then there's this there's this interesting thing that I see happening in growth stage, which is a win one, win two, win three planning need develops. And what I say by this, let me get into this again in, in the future here, but you have to win three times in growth stage. You have to win a good job, you have to win turnover and and or pre-construction. I loosely say that you have to win it the job turnover, and then you have to win the actually execution of the work. If you win three times and you and you use this kind of thought process, if you win three times. You know, it, things are going to go well. If you if you go 0 for three, if you don't take a good job, you turn over your turnover shaky, and then you stumble in the operation side. Yikes! Watch out. That makes for an interesting, um, challenging job. So so growth growth stage characteristics, um, maturity characteristics. So in maturity, I see things saying. Procurement is well established and you're able to know where you're at and you're, I'm going to say no to things that I do and I'm going to say no to things that I don't want to do or know that I know or know that we know that we're not good at doing. Um, we have some long-term employees. Our system training is consistent. So we train and we understand what we're doing and we're training what we have. Um, you know, we're talking about what strategies are out there to become a dominant player that are evident. It's like, no, I'm going to make a strategy for this because I know if I do this, I can, it's going to make my reinventing happen sooner and quicker into growth mode in the future. Um, you know, management systems can be adapted by leadership. So I talked about adaptability and structured adaptability. Um, you know, non-structured adaptability is, is dangerous in maturity or in any stage. If you just are really adaptable, you know, you're just fighting fires all the time. Man, adaptive, structured adaptability is good. And in maturity stage, we have structured adaptability. We know where we can change or adjust our plans to move forward. Revenues are maximized and you win it, you win three times. You win profitable work, you win turnover or pre-construction, depending on what type of company you are, and then you win um, in operations and you maximize profit. So my theory is like this. Sure, companies go, if I win three out of three, I will make more than my bid margin. If I win two out of three, I will probably make my bid margin, maybe you know, comfortably make it. If I win one of three, if I win, if I win one of three, and I'll talk about this in this in later on again, I'm not going to dwell on it too long here. If I win one out of three, I'm probably not going to make any money. I'm not going to lose any money. If I win zero out of three, I'm donating to the project and I'm definitely going to lose money. So um, some concepts to think about there about the wins. And then last but not least, decline. This is where we're where we're looking at, you know, like where are we at? Loss of focus, pretty simply stated here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. Um, lack of trust, you know, there's a trust issues. We have lots of turnover, evidence, evidence of internal system failures. So now all of a sudden we're like, holy cow, this is going to fail. I, my safety is maybe failing. My quality control or different failures are happening. Um, rework on every project happens and I'm going back to jobs that I shouldn't. And that's causing much profit erosion. And I'm, I'm, I'm losing, I'm, I'm losing profitable work. I'm potentially not turning over work correctly. And I'm ultimately having profit erosion, erosion in decline. And so where are we at there? Focus is the key. Um, and then reinvent. And so it's like, all right, so here we are reinventing. We're looking at a different market. We're, you know, we're trying to align ourselves with clarity. Where are we at with passion? You know, what are we at with vision and mission? We're, we're talking about strategy. We're saying, okay, how are we going to realize some kind of a strategy in order to reinvent where we're going? Um, we're taking, we're talking about once we have a strategy, how are we going to implement it? Where do we implement it? What do we want to spend time implementing with tactics? And then ultimately it's all about training, you know, consistency and training. How do we train on the right things in order to align ourselves into this next space that we're going into? And then this leadership versus management approach of adaptability. How do we create our, how do we become a leader rather than just a really good manager? How do we use adaptability and structure adaptability to, to create leadership? And, um, and not just run around chasing our tail with being way too adaptable. Um, and so those are just a few thoughts there with reinventing ourselves. And so here are some hurdles for this awareness um, that happened at this stage. The first hurdle is time. The first hurdle is 
how do I have time to think through this? How do I, what group do I use? Or is our leader, do we have a leadership group that can do this together? Do I do this on my own or how do we do this? Do I use, do I use my internal? And lots of times it's a, it's a cash flow thing. How do you, how do you manage through what this looks like? And, and so a big hurdle is how do you, how do you do great? Awesome. Good job. It's great to say all these fun things, but what happens? How do we, how do we step through that together? Or how do we step through that with our team together? Um, and how do we stay objective when we're doing that? Do we really look in our mirror and say, where are we really at? And do we really are, know where we're going? Second hurdle is vision. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to do, it's hard to have vision. It's hard to say, what do we, what do we really want to be? It's like, you know, one of the things that I've learned is you can do anything. All of us as people can't, we can do anything, but what do we want to do is the thing that matters. So vision is a big challenge, a hurdle. What do we do with vision? Um, systems are a big hurdle. What are the systems? What are the expectations of the systems that we want to have in our life cycle that allow us to be, do what we do? Do we need systems or where are we at? How are we doing what we're doing? Simplified and, and optimized. How do we manage them? Growth. <laughs> growth is a big hurdle. Do we want to, I mean, growth, customized growth is challenging with, with life cycle awareness. Where in growth and where are people either stagnant or system stagnant or where are they, where are we able to grow really fast with people or with systems? Because people and systems go together. Um, focus is a hurdle. Um, just in general, focus is a hurdle because time goes so by so fast. 30 days, as we all know, goes by like a flash in the pan. And so staying focused is a hurdle. You know, quarterly even is hard to do when it comes to understanding where we're at with this type of talk. Um, and monthly is, is really challenging. It almost is a cadence of accountability that has to be developed with focus. And then the hurdle obviously is profit. Where do you want to find your profit? And is there, do, do you have a win structure that you know how to win? And, and where is that hurdle? How do you, how do you have a win structure and where do you want to align profit? So just a couple of thoughts on hurdles that, that happen in this stage that we need to be concerned about. So, um, I have, I have, I have went through this relatively quickly. Um, and left some good times for questions here, especially with my um, with my time being cut a little bit. So, in closing, um, or talking here before we get into some dialogue, um, where is where is the life cycle that you're on? Is something to think about. Um, have you analyzed where you are with the life cycle, or have you thought through this? Um, do you have clarity of purpose? How are systems managed? Where are your hurdles to success? All of these items, I believe, are very important to analyze in this in this business life cycle concept. Um, and and just the guide the guide thought here for takeaway: um, everyone is on a life cycle, and and if you and if you believe that, I believe that there's a there's a good way to think through it. Um, finding an awareness approach is very important before you start talking strategy or before you start talking tactical, before you start talking consistency. If you start at the end of any sort of of these of these concepts or you start jumping into the middle of the concepts, an awareness of how you want to do it is so important because you can waste so much important time thinking through or 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 managing strategy and 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 just do a bunch of back and forth or potentially not have alignment um, with your strategies. Um, so an awareness at the beginning is so important of any kind of any kind of guide that you need to do when it comes to talking strategy or tactical um, or or an approach. You know, some of these areas that are out there, like there's a whole bunch of different things that are out there for awareness. There's books and books and books. And I could book you to death with things like E-Myth or, you know, there's um, um, a whole bunch of different things that are that are out there these these other types of books these awareness um you know um and and so the awareness is hugely important on on where we're at and where we're going or it can be very um very challenging and and not not focused um the the set the third one there stay objective with internal evaluation um you know what i've learned about being objective and I'm and 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 an internal evaluation. It's hard, like I said earlier, it's hard to work on the business and work in the business at the same time. And especially in today's market, being remote and lots of times being not together with what we're doing, it's very hard to grab teams and and align them um, and be objective internally. And you know, we've got jobs everywhere. We're using these all. Look at us today, right now, with this with the with the system we're in right now. We're all remote. We have we have very little interaction with each other. 
And to be objective and to get things put into a into a strategy is 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 really important to be to be objective on how that's actually going to happen. How are we going to do that? And 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 some thought on that to start with is is really important. And then last but not least, you know, the next stages that we go into is is an awareness that each stage may require a different strategy. And um, and this awareness and the takeaway that, you know, it's like not just one big strategy is going to solve the world. And anybody that tells you that is not telling you being realistic. They're selling you a bill of goods. And so and so I've seen, you know, strategy done well and I've seen tactics done done well and I've seen strategy that is just lip service and yeah, great idea. It's great strategy. I want to be the biggest, baddest, whatever, but how are you actually going to get there? And what is the actually, what are you actually going to do? And do you have time in these different areas to even pull together any kind of an agreement of what's going to happen um, or alignment with your team of what's going to happen? And then you're a year goes by and pretty soon you've got, you're right back where you were. So, so each stage is really important um, of these, of these four different concepts to know where you're at, and 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 look back to look forward and slow down to go fast and so um and so there's a big a big awareness in this life cycle piece at the beginning to kind of get yourself straightened up and where you're at and what you're doing um and know and once again for yourself and for your for your space we're in with your company what you're happening what's happening with with what you're doing so um and so with that um let's see i've got about i've got some time for for questions here in a second but you know there's a there's a um, uh, book that I'm going to talk about in the next next section, and and um, and so this this quote is is something that I believe fits fits, um, and it's been this has been since way before I didn't create this. This is Edwards Deming. If you if you want to do a quick Google search on who Edwards Deming is, um, you know he's done a lot of work um, on systems and and um, and people and how how results get happening, and and um, he's got a 14 point um a way of, of of how it happens and it's it's made for big businesses not necessarily for small businesses or for construction businesses in particular but this quote sums it up to a t every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets and so and so if our systems and if our current life cycle systems are designed in the way they're designed it is going to get the results that it is designed to get and whether or not it's been designed for anything or it is strategically designed for anything, or tactics are thrown into the system, it will get results that it that it gets. And and I believe this. I've seen it happen. And and it every system. I would add to this and say every system also is designed to get the results it gets, and it can be optimized optimized in ways that will provide better results. And so with no system, very challenging. With no, no, with no life cycle understanding, very challenging. Um, and so the system needs to be designed to get the results it gets. And that's very key to, to understanding the next stages of, of um, you know, winning this battle for consistency. Um, because without a, without, once again, without a system, very hard to get consistent and win this battle that we're talking about and winning the battle of consistency. Um, you have to have a system designed in order to get those results. So. Um, with that, I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to minimize, try to get my screen here um, pulled across so that we can talk about um, we can talk about questions um, if there are any, um, and we can we can have a quick conversation um, about questions. And so, um, are there any 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 questions that anybody has with um with anything um to start with let's see how many how many people do we have oh i guess i'm oh there's there we come back so um does anybody have any any questions on on any of those key any of those concepts that that i shared or or not i don't i don't know if we do um the next sections that we have that i have that we're going to talk through are going to be very more a lot more specific about strategy and some more ideas and concepts like i said i'm not gonna i'm not a i'm not like a lecture book like drill in a bunch of statistics type of person i'm a common sense um type of approach and so 
what I'm going to do these next few sections is going to be not much, not much of the book. Here's what the book says. Here's how strategy works. If you're interested in doing stuff like that, there's obviously a ton of stuff online. If you just go do a quick Google search on strategy and, and awareness, you can find many, many ideas and many, many concepts. It's kind of not how I believe. I believe it's out there and it's a good way to, to bolster what we're doing, but in what in construction and specifically with what our groups and our teams need, there's a there's a there's a more consistent approach and this can, winning the battle requires a couple of key factors and that's what I'm going to talk about throughout these these um, these next few um, hours. So um, and so with that, I'm I'm I've set this concept up as you know understanding where we're at and where we're going to go, and um, I'm not sure if there is any any kind of questions about or where we're headed and. Um, um, Candy, I'm not sure. There's the group here is is fairly fairly small. Or if we're if we're not, I'm gonna I'm just gonna finish early for this one. And um, any any questions? I don't see any questions. I'm sorry. Say that again. I don't see any questions. Great. Okay. Well. Um, I hope to see all of you again in session number two at one o'clock um, and and we'll keep it. I'm just going to keep it real brief and keep a keep a concept, like I said, of, of of managing through this and throwing out these ideas. And so if there's no questions, um, hopefully we'll see you all again at one o'clock and um, we'll continue our discussion about the strategy portion of realizing how do we how do we set up a strategy? What does a strategy look like? And how are some of the concepts of strategy? Um, you know, where does where does this conversation go with strategy? And how do you how do you want to do strategy? What does it look like? And um, and then where does it go? So and thank you, Grant. If, if nothing else, we'll we'll get dig into the meat and potatoes in uh, at one. Sounds good. See you then. Okay. See you at one. Bye. Bye.